Hey guys, it's Mrs. Blue. Let's make some art. You can find me on YouTube at Mrs. Blue. Let's make some art. If you email me pictures of your art to jlpick at cps.edu, you might have a chance of winning the elusive golden paintbrush. So, drum roll please. Today's golden paintbrush winner is a repeat winner because every now and then we need repeat winners when they're doing amazing projects. Maisie, you are our golden paintbrush winner today for your Chewy. Let's make sure you can see that in, in Maisie's name. I mean, that Chewy is pretty awesome and I can tell she totally used the wet on wet technique and mixed media with crayons and paint. When you look up close, you can see it. Uh, and Chewy Sash right here is pretty amazing. Uh, I love that Chewy Maisie. I hope he's hanging in your room or your brother's room or, you know, your dad's room because that's pretty cool. Okay, so today let's talk about the artist you can see on my dress. Uh, this artist is a French artist named Claude Monet. I'm sure he ate lots of French fries and French dressing and French bread. No, I actually don't think he did. But he lived in Giverny, France in the late 1800s and early 1900s and also in Paris. He also studied art in Paris. And he lived, when he lived in Giverny, he lived by this actual pond that you see right here in this artwork and on my dress. And he painted with kind of a blotchy technique. So when you look up really close, whoa, it looks super fuzzy and messy, but when you back up far away, it looks like a masterpiece. That is called Impressionism. So he was a master at Impressionism. His artwork, I tried, I tried creating art like this once. It is very hard. You have to keep stepping away from your artwork and looking at it from far away and getting in close and looking at it close up, and it's very, very tricky. So uh, I respect Claude Monet and I'm often asked who my favorite artist is and I think it might be Claude Monet even though I find that question to be very, very hard. And secretly, I want my husband to surprise me with a trip to Giverny, France and I want to go see these gardens that are still there. They still exist. You can rent little houses and you can go see where Claude Monet painted. Uh, so let's create some art like Claude Monet today. Now. You will need paints today. I mean, I suppose you could use markers or crayons, but uh, if you really want your art to look like Claude Monet, you're going to need some paints. And again, like always, I'm going to use my watercolors that I got at Jewel Osco for $3, so they're fairly cheap, and um, some water in order to create that art. I am also going to use some Q-tips today, the kind you clean your ears with that you should not stick very far in your ears. Um, that was a little side note. So I am going to use some Q-tips. You don't have to. You can just use a paintbrush or you can use crayons or markers and it will turn out amazing, I'm sure. Uh, you are also going to need some tape today. That's important because we're going to create this bridge that you see on my dress, the famous Claude Monet bridge with some tape. So maybe I should put Claude Monet's original bridge. I think I can fit it on here. Maybe I can fit it above and put this white paper. Oh yes, that is perfection. So we're gonna recreate this bridge on our paper with some good old fashioned scotch tape that we want to be able to peel off. So you don't want to press, 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 press with your fingernail, because then if you take the, the tape off, it will rip your paper too much. Um, and we don't want that to happen. That would be tragic. So let's start by recreating the bridge with tape. It's just a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna start by pulling, let's make sure you can see the tape. I'm gonna pull the tape, you know, extra long, a little bit longer than the paper because I want it to stick off of the edge. I don't wanna fold it under. I don't wanna cut it so that it, uh, it only goes to the edge because remember, we're peeling it off. And I'm gonna start by creating that curve on my paper. So I'm gonna go here, and now I'm just gonna kind of curve the paper, and it's gonna have wrinkles in it. 
the tape, but that's okay. The wrinkles will not matter. It will look great. So there's my tape. It's a little bit hard to see, but I made a little arch right here, just like this arch right here on Claude Monet's bridge. And my tape is sticking off the side right here. I'm not cutting it because again, I want to pull that back off of my paper. Okay, now I'm gonna tear another piece about as long as the paper, allowing room for the curve. And here we go again. You can see it rips the paper a little bit when you take it off, but that will be okay. My paper's thick enough, it will be fine. And I have pretty thin paper, so you'll be okay. Okay, there's that. And now I'm gonna make, so this is the second arch that goes like this. Maybe I'll take a pencil and I'll draw on the tape. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna draw on the tape so you can see where I put the tape. And that won't show when I take my tape off. You guys don't have to do this. So there's my first piece of tape. There's my second piece of tape, right? You can see how it curves, it's bendy bendy right there. Now let's put some pieces on between the bridge, like these pieces of the bridge. So I'm gonna put one piece here and I'm gonna draw a line so you can see it. I put one piece right there, here, here, and I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do four little pieces, four. There, there's my bridge shape. That is all the tape that I need, my dear friends. And uh, now is the fun part. Now we get to start painting. We're not going to draw anything today. Uh, I just used my pencil to trace the bridge, but you don't really need a pencil. And now we're just gonna kind of look at Claude Monet's artwork for inspiration to paint ours. And we're going to paint impressionistic style. So nothing, nothing super fancy about this. You're just gonna try to kind of replicate the colors we see in Claude Monet's. There, I think I can make that show even more. Look at that, how fancy. Okay, so, and, I, and I'm gonna paint around the tape, of course, because when we pull the tape off, it will leave a white mark, and that will be our fancy Cloud Monet bridge. Okay, I think I need to, of course, start with some green, right? And I need to gr get the green pretty watery. We're gonna need quite a bit of green for our artwork today. And if you have more varieties of paints at home, good for you. I don't. I just have this tiny little Jewel Osco palette, which so far has worked perfect. All right, I'm going to start. Look at this. Meet, meet me. Impressionistic painting. This is like just fun painting. And look, you can paint right up to the tape. You can touch the tape because it, uh, it will not soak through to the paper. If you really want to be like Claude Monet, you could hold your paper up away from your face every now and then and see how your impressionist artwork is looking from far away. Back away from it a little bit. I'm going to start by just doing a nice blotchy layer of green. like so. And don't you forget about those Q-tips. I'm going to use those in a little bit. All around that bridge. Okay, now I see more green growth under the bridge right here. So I'm going to add just a little bit more underneath. This famous bridge. Ooh, that's looking so great. And then the water in this particular Claude Monet painting is a uh, very mossy and green, but how about I'm gonna make mine a little bit blue, like so, because why not? This is my art. It doesn't have to look just like Claude Monet's. Isn't this fun today? Just fun, impressionistic painting. I looked for my black beret, so I looked like a French artist like Claude Monet, but I could not find it anywhere. It is missing in action.
Ooh, I like how this is looking. Okay, now let's mix in some more colors. I'm gonna take some brown and I'm gonna mix some browns because I see when I look at Claude Monet's art, look, I see kind of shades of brown here. So I think I'm gonna mix in some browns like so. I rinse my brush before I get more. Look, it looks like there's some browns in here. Really is gonna make it look like there's shadows behind things. The more layers of color you add, the better your impressionistic artwork will look. We'll have to have a day where we paint like Bob Ross too. He kind of painted like this as well. His artwork was more realistic than Claude Monet's, but he used very, very fast painting techniques. Nothing he painted took more than an hour. Now, Claude Monet, I think, spent a bit more time on his. I'm gonna kind of paint a shadow right here because I see some shadow under the bridge. Okay, uh, let's do a little bit more brown in here. The more you cover your paper, the better. Let's see what the bottom of this, oh, there's all kinds of lily pads on here, so cool. Maybe I'll take some yellow. I'll get some yellow in here, need more water. Because if I mix a little green with this yellow, artists, it will make a kind of a lime green color, just a tiny bit of green. I'm gonna add some more yellow on top of this. I want it to make kind of a different shade of green. So we're varying our colors a little bit. All right, and I again, I'm gonna have lots of puddles on my paper today, so I'm gonna have to really let it sit and dry when I'm done. Um, I think it's time for some Q tips. Now, here's the trick with Q tips Q tips are not wet like a brush, so you could either dip your brush in your Q tip in water, or you could dip some water in the paint and you could get the paint wet. I'm adding a couple puddles of water into my paint. I'm gonna add some into the yellow. I think I'm gonna want some orange, maybe even some purple. Okay, so now I have water. I mean, let's see if I can move this over here so you can see it, there we go. Okay, I have water in my paints. Now I can take my Q-tip and I'm only going to use one end of the Q-tip because I want to be able to hold this end. If I dip both ends of the Q-tip in paint, it's just going to get very messy. So I want to be able to hold it like this and this part touches my hand so I don't want paint on that part and I'm just going to use this end and I'm going to dip the Q-tip in paint and I'm going to create some lilies. which is pretty fun. I mean, there are just lilies all over his artwork. It just looks so cool. And I always think adding a little bit of red to anything just makes it stand out. Okay, now this Q-tip, I wanna use orange, but I'm not going to use this Q-tip. I mean, it's a Q-tip, Q-tips are cheap. I'm going to get a new one and I'm gonna use some orange. Pretty beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna move this aside and I think I'm gonna take the paint, the tape off. Now, you do have to be a little bit careful when you're taking the tape off because the paper is gonna rip a little bit and it's wet. If I were you, you guys have more time. I would wait for your artwork to dry and then take the tape off because the artwork is wet right now and it's fragile, so you have to be careful. Now, I'm just carefully pulling mine off now, um, but you might do better to wait so you don't 
rip your artwork. I'm, I'm being very risky right now in my artistic behavior. And look at that, oh my goodness, it looks so impressionistic. Let's put this on the screen. Maybe I'll put Claude Monet's on the screen too. So you can see both. I mean, if that is an impressionistic artwork, I don't know what is. You guys, thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit about Claude Monet and enjoyed making his famous bridge and lilies in Giverny. All right, you guys, have a great day. Bye.